Trying to take notes from a large textbook is super overwhelming, and medical school had to easily read 20 to 30 pages per lecture, and thus hundreds of pages each and every week. But here is the note-taking strategy that I use to help me ace all my classes without the excess time. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to break down the exact strategy that I used in medical school to go through a very hefty textbook and syllabus and basically talk about how to take notes, how to use them effectively, and most importantly, use it to be able to study for your quizzes and tests without having to go back and reread all your notes. So step number one is to really rethink how to take notes in the first place. So most students, including myself in both college and medical school, will take notes usually the wrong way. We often think of notes as one of two things. One, we try to make the information condensed down into something we can understand, and two, we tried to basically transfer from one modality, being the textbook, to another, like an outline or a Word doc, however you want to do it. But essentially it ends up being a big outline into a shorter one, and still we have no idea what it says and have not given any attention to the review process, which is the most important. And if you're anything like me as an early medical student, you thought you were being efficient by transferring your notes into like a nice Word doc outline or a notebook, only to find out that you really had no time to actually master the content that you put in there in the first place. And I suspect a lot of you guys that are watching this right now are nodding your head to be like, yep, that's me, what the hell do I do? And don't worry, I was in the same shoes, but two things that really helped me go from an average med student to somebody who's able to get A's on their test is really asking two questions. When I was reading from a textbook, instead of thinking, how am I gonna make something into my own words, the two things I was looking for is one, what in the world is actually important in the paragraphs that I'm reading? And then two, how do I wanna transition that into something that I can use later on to easily review? In the next few steps, we'll get into both of them very specifically. So step number two is just do one task at a time. When I was in college, and definitely as an early medical student, I thought it made sense to read something and then try to put it in my own words as a Word doc or on the side in the margins of the textbook but then I found the waste of time through context switching. If you're unfamiliar, context switching is basically a fancy word for multitasking. When you're doing something, for example, like reading the textbook and then writing your notes at the same time, you think you're being efficient, you think you're being effective. But over multiple studies, we found that when people are doing multitasking, even with just two activities, 20% of the energy and time you're spending is simply transitioning between the tasks. There's no effectiveness. That's about spending 100 minutes or roughly an hour and a half reading a syllabus chapter or a lecture, then while I think I'm being efficient for the entire 90 to 100 minutes, really 20 of those minutes are simply me transitioning to figure out like, what did I just read, writing it down, and then going back to like, where did I leave off? And really that's the biggest issue. So if you wanna read your textbook quicker, if you wanna read it more effectively, stick to one task. So go through your reading, and we'll talk about how to do that in a second, and then come back and write your notes, which I promise you will be much more effective. And so the big takeaway again is that when you're faced with a huge amount of text is to really think about your reading and your note taking completely separately. Now let's actually get into the reading of your textbook and we get into step number three, which is to mark your notable topics and ideas. Now when you're reading through your textbooks, you're gonna come across two or three paragraphs and if you took a step back, you'll be like, I understand the main idea here, here's some pieces of details, and this is really what this section of this textbook is trying to go for. And then you'll do the next thing for the next table, the next graph, the next set of paragraphs. You kind of get the bigger picture. But you don't want to waste time later on by having to come back and try to figure out what the main idea is again. And so one of my favorite strategies to do in medical school when I was reading a really text-heavy um, syllabus or something from the textbook, like for example, this is the textbook that I was given to study from my internal medicine boards. Usually I would do is I would read two to three paragraphs and try to get an idea of like, what's the main idea here? And once I understood that, then I would try to essentially put a star or marking, you know, any type of notation to the margins of that paragraph to basically say, this is kind of the sentence that overall summarizes what you're about to learn. Um, so then it's easy for me later on when I'm looking at all my markings to say, oh, like this is the sentence that refers to the big idea of this paragraph. And so a simple rule that I would give myself is to read about three to five paragraphs in the text, depending on how kind of heavy it was on information, and make marking next to the lines of the sentence that it corresponded to. Essentially, these would be the things that I would want to take notes on, but because I don't want to waste time trying to take notes now, I'm essentially just leaving a mark saying, come back to this later. If anything, if you forget, you can just read that line and say, oh, like that's what I was trying to take notes on. Now you kind of know and you have a little marker to come back to for later. Now, if you're given a textbook, obviously in the digital age in the form of a PDF or an ebook, you could definitely guys can check out the episode that we did on essentially how to remember everything you read. I go through an example of a PDF in that video. I'll link it down below. But it's the same concept. You can highlight the first line of that paragraph or the sentence that you want to be able to remember. And again, come back later and write your notes so that way you can finish your reading and then come back and focus on your note taking. Now we are going to take a pause right here because I know I was there that you likely have questions at this point. Before we go into note taking, probably asking about like what is noteworthy? Like what is high yield? How do I know when I'm reading something that something is, should turn into one of my notes versus just a piece of detail I should just kind of know is within the textbook. 
Great questions. Number one, definitely recommend you guys check out this entire video that I broke down on the Q&A method. This is like the method that completely changed my note taking strategy in medical school. And so again, I will link that down below. It's helped tons of students. It's also the format of what we'll talk about later in this video. So make sure you guys check that out down below. Number two is to really focus on thinking about big ideas and then focusing and honing in on the details. So see the forest and then focus on the individual trees. So when you're reading your three to five paragraphs, one of the big questions you wanna ask yourself is like, what is the big idea that could be testable here? If you're learning about a disease in medical school, first things you wanna know obviously is like, what is the disease? Why does it happen? And then eventually you'll kind of get into how do I treat it and specifically what medications do I use? And so when you're reading, you definitely wanna think about your learning as a tree and branches. Think about everything as a tree. What is the main idea within the first three to five paragraphs you're reading? And then what bits of details do you wanna add onto to make the tree look a little bit more complete? And then finally, point number three, and this is really what made the transition from me being like a C to a B student to somebody who was getting consistent A's, is as I was reading three to five paragraphs or whatever it may have been on my text, the main thing I'm looking for is what question could come out of what I just read? Like what would my professor like to ask about? Particularly if you've taken multiple quizzes and tests from the same instructor before or for that same class, what would be fair game? What kind of things could I be test on? Now, if I could say, for example, they want me to understand how to recognize this disease on a microscope through pathology. And here this paragraph is talking about what it looks like under a microscope. I may want to start that and come back to it later because I know that could be testable. I could see how I can easily write a question with that being the answer. And this is the biggest transition that you can make as a note taker because now you'll start to look at paragraphs as essentially the test maker and not the test taker. What questions could come out of what I just read? And then you can find opportunities to make markings and highlights next to those sentences that would be those respective answers. And after practicing this method, if you're still struggling trying to figure out what the hell is important, a few recommendations that we give to a lot of our coaching students is sometimes just go watch a quick YouTube video, maybe like five, 10 minutes, you can watch this super fast on 2X and just try to get a foundation on the topic that you're about to read on. So if I was gonna learn about a disease, it may make sense to watch a five minute video that somebody's like spent lots of time on, on that disease, then read the 20 to 30 pages that I was given in medical school. And if I saw something in the video and now it's in the text, that's high yield. That's something that should definitely show up in my notes. And the more times you do it, you'll be able to say like, I've heard this multiple times. My professor also mentioned this in class when they're talking. This is something I definitely want to take notes on. And on the note of coaching, if you are somebody who is struggling on their medical journey, get the grades you want and just spending way too many hours, have no idea what to do next, click down below to just kind of see our coaching program just to see even if you're barely interested. The type of results that we've been able to get students within the span of just two weeks, frankly, will work with you for the span of anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. If you're interested more about those programs, I'll link it down below. Now, step number four is to finally come back and to focus on your note taking. Now, I completely changed how I studied the medical school once I discovered a very quick and efficient way of studying through Anki, which we don't talk about in this video whatsoever. But if you guys are interested, uh, the most popular video that we have here on YouTube will be linked right here. I'll also link it down below. Um, super effective. I go over the basics of Anki. If you're a complete newbie, you don't feel comfortable. But even if you're comfortable and you want to see some advanced strategies, I can really just change the game on how quickly you study and the grades you get. That video has been by far the most popular that we have here on YouTube. So I'll link it down below. But the first strategy that I was ever doing in medical school that again was still effective, um, the Anki one just worked a lot better for me, is basically what I'm about to go right now. And that's called the Q&A note-taking method. So here's how basically I would do a Q&A method. So for example, this is the textbook that I use for my board studying. And essentially when I was reading, I was looking for marks that I would want to come back to later. For example, here we're learning about gastroparesis. This is basically where the stomach has, due to you know autonomic and neural issues, won't do a good job contracting. Some people have nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. And so I'm finding sentences and lines that would be important to come back to and definitely be testable. So for example, this first line here, we're learning about essentially what gastroparesis is, the best way to test it, and then here specifically we're talking about dietary and medication things we should be knowing for. And then finally this big highlight, which is a hint hint, it's almost like your professor telling you this may show up on the test, talks about you know common side effects that people have with the medication above. At this point, I haven't really written any notes, but because I've marked this, now I'm gonna go back and saying like, let's try to quickly remember what I was going for. Okay, this is the diagnosis. This one's talking about how do we test it? 
And then this one's going to be talk about, you know, overall treatments, et cetera. And so now that I've been able to quickly refresh on what I want to take notes on, the most important thing is to actually go back to my note taking method. Now there are tons of ways that you can take notes. The most simplest that I used in medical school was having a Word doc per lecture and then writing down my notes in that fashion. And we'll talk about exactly how to do it. Now, as technology has advanced a little bit since I've been in medical school, you have tons of other tools, for example, like Notion, that you can do lots of things on. But you can keep it, again, very simple in just doing this on a notebook or on a Word doc. But I'm gonna show you exactly how I take notes through Notion. All right, so now we are officially in our Notion database. This is essentially what we call the Notion method um, table that we use for a lot of our students in the Level Up Your Setting course. So if you guys are interested in just having access to this template and then being able to use it for your classes, that'll be linked down below. Um, but essentially what this is, is just a growing table where you can look at every single lecture and then have all of your material in a note, easy note taking fashion. So as you're going through your textbook, you can easily write the questions and the answers, um, as well as the lecture syllabus or the page that it came from. In addition, the nice thing about Notion is that you can nicely categorize things. So if I was in biochem and I was learning a sort of specific pathway about the Krebs cycle, I could put Krebs cycle. And then as I get closer to my quiz and test, if I feel like I was struggling with the Krebs cycle, I can just tell Notion to show me all of the questions and answers, even if it came from various different chapters and lectures only about the Krebs cycle. That way you can really perfect that topic. Um, and using our Notion method that we've created for students, you can essentially come back and review over time and understand, did I actually review and do an initial pass on my material? Do I feel confident going into my exam? As well as how difficult something is. So you can use this Notion database that's in the Level Up Your Studying course for a variety of things, but also including external resources outside of your textbooks. If you're watching videos, if you're using question banks, so many different things, but essentially your entire questions from your lectures, from your textbooks is in one place. Now, if Notion is something that is foreign to you, you can easily use something that we call the simple Notion method. Essentially, and this is just a template, you can go and put all of your lectures in using the toggle function. So let's say I had just cover lecture one and I'm going into lecture two. You can essentially add all of your questions and notes from your textbook. So let's say now I have gone through my textbook and have found all my markings. Now I can find those respective questions that I wanna come back to and mark down or my specific notes. And then I can put in all the specific evidences or if I'm too lazy, I can just put the page from the lecture or the textbook that it came from. And I can essentially do this for the duration of that textbook. Now, if we use lecture one and we use our example from the textbook and said, let's go over a gastroparesis. If I just open this, you can see that I have my various questions from that section of the textbook that we were talking about. So I can use gastroparesis and I can put all the answers down below here in the toggle function. And if I want to quiz myself, I can just you know, quiz myself and then reveal the answer, which is really nice. Same thing for the treatments, um, using bullet point fashions. And again, if you're lazy, you can just put the page number that it came from or screenshot things if you have a digital textbook. So the toggle function is very nice. It keeps it very simple. One advanced and pro tip that we use and for our students that we work with one-on-one -on -one in our coaching system is we'll recommend essentially being able to stratify if a topic, despite you quizzing yourself on it, is something you're strong on versus something you're weak on. So let's say I've answered all these three questions. Now I wanna be able to say, is this question something I'm gonna have a tough time remembering later because I don't feel quite as confident? In that case, I may want to move it to my weak point toggle kind of chapter or folder. And if I'm feeling pretty good about the treatment of gastroparesis, I can say mastered. And maybe I don't really know how to diagnose it quite yet or don't feel comfortable that I will in two weeks when the quiz or exam rolls around, then I can just put it in a weak points. Now, when you come back and review lecture one before your test and quiz, you can have all of the specific topics essentially within both the mastered and weak points. And it makes sense that I should probably start with the questions in the weak point section first, um, and then go to the master. If you wanna do this on a daily basis, you can also just have a big master deck as well as a big weak point deck and move them according to lecture. I like to have it stratified per lecture so I kind of know what was asked and learned through my textbook reading for the entire lecture or the entire chapter and then move one by one. But again, when I'm reviewing, I would come back to the weak points first and then once I nail those down, I would move them into the mastered section. So that way, every time I was getting closer to a quiz or test, I could say for this lecture or for this textbook reading, I feel confident about all the questions that I made for it myself. Um, and that again, makes it very easy. So again, if you want access to the entire Notion method and the entire Notion database, um, that is included for all of our students in the Level Up Your Studying course. And if you're interested in working with us one-on-one -on -one to kind of implement a system like this for your personalized day-to-day -day in studying, just let us know um, in the MedIgnite program, which I'll also link below. Now, hopefully you guys are getting a lot of value so far, but I promise you we're not done. Step number five is to give yourself a timer for each and every phase. A lot of students will struggle with the note-taking process because there's typically no end date. Everyone is basically saying, I'm going to read this textbook to completion and even if that takes me two hours versus one hour i'm going to do it but you have to understand that the most important thing is actually reviewing those questions and the notes you make not so much of actually putting them on an outline or a piece of paper 
So you have to have some kind of time component when you're reading a textbook and definitely when you're making your note-taking process. Now this time will be dependent on one, how long you take, how long your lectures are, how quick of a reader you are, but once you come to a baseline, and so for example, if you have a 15 to 20 page lecture, let's say it takes you an hour. That means that you should mentally know that about 30 minutes, I should be more than halfway through the lecture in my reading. That's because usually your energy level will dip, your efficiency will dip, and you'll typically not spend as quick of a time going through your lecture on the second half. So you already wanna be past the halfway mark. So if it's 20 pages, you wanna be on page like 11 or 12 by the 30 minute mark. This is a good way to be able to look at a clock and say, I'm right on cue or I'm going too slow, I need to speed up. And once you find yourself kind of getting in a flow with the method, you may wanna ask like, how do I even do this even faster? Simple strategy is to take that one hour and cut it by you know 25 minutes or 25%. So if I'm spending 100 minutes on an activity, I'm saying, well, let's try to get this done in 75 minutes. That means that same um, 20 page lecture needs to be done in 70 minutes. That means I need to be halfway now, not in 50 minutes, but actually at like 35, 37 minutes. So having that quicker timer, I promise you will force yourself to be more efficient as long as you're focused and not distracted in the rest of your environment. And as a pro tip, you can do the same absolute thing with your note taking. When you come your note taking saying, how long does it usually take me to transfer my notes into a toggle function or a Word doc? The answer is like, it takes me 30 to 45 minutes, or an hour. You can say, I'm gonna try to do this in 45 minutes and then trying to figure out where your halfway mark should be. If you're still taking notes on page five and you're already spending 30 minutes on what should have been an hour task, you're too far behind and you need to speed up. In the same way, if you're already more than ahead, then beautiful, you're right on cue and you may be able to finish that task even sooner. And I can't talk about note taking without talking about how the hell to review them. So step number six is to systematically come back to your notes and your review process as predictably as possible. Now this is really what we spend a majority of our time doing when we coach students, particularly in medical school, of how to create a schedule where your note taking becomes faster so then you know lecture one is going to be covered the first time on this day and it's going to be covered the second time on this day. I'm gonna guess that most people that are watching this probably don't even have a system where their note taking is on point, which is why you're watching this video, understand and even less likely, you probably don't have a system where you can come back to that lecture the second time. But imagine if you can cover each lecture at least twice before each quiz and test. How confident would you go through? That's exactly what we help all of our coaching students do through a personalized step-by-step -step system over the span of anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. Even if you're not sure if it's gonna be for you, I encourage you just to go click down below just to see the results that people have gotten and try to ask yourself, is that something that I would want in my own life? But if you wanna to try to instill the system yourself, you should be able to say, if I'm covering and doing the notes on this lecture, I'm gonna be able to review this lecture for the first time and ideally the second time on these following days on my calendar. It should be kind of booked in like an appointment, no ifs and buts of negotiating around it. And then you can see how predictable your schedule should be but now you know that every day, every lecture is kind of plugged into your schedule to review again the first time and the second time before your quizzes and tests. Now, if you got value of what we covered so far, there's tons of free options that I promise you'll give value from. First, definitely check out all the videos that we mentioned in today's episodes, including the Anki video, the Q&A video, as well as the video on how to remember everything that you're reading. I will link those down first down below. If you want some of our best free resources for people on their medical journey, definitely check out the Med School Success Handbook. These are 30 plus tips that I found to be helpful both for studying, time management, and all of the obstacles and hurdles that medical school throws your way, how I was able to overcome them, hopefully to help you out too. And again, if you want results ASAP and you have no idea what to do next, then definitely check out our coaching programs down below. We work with students all across the medical journey uh, aspect, including medical students and people from PA, pharmacy, dental, you name it, but also all across the world. So again, if you're just interested to see what kind of results we can give you, link down below, tons of testimonials, and then I'll let you make the decision. But if this video was helpful, then definitely check out this video right here on all the study strategies that I used in medical school to get a 3.9 GPA, as well as this video right here on my favorite study strategy in Anki, step-by-step -step exactly how I used it, plus advanced strategies. As always, my friends, thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.